Hello everyone and welcome back to the vlog. Finally, I'm so happy to be back, but yeah, this month has not been a particularly good month. It's been quite rough and I have not spent much time at the plot at all. Um, yeah, and I'm really sad about it, but I am happy to be here now. So today we are going to do a tour of the plot. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to show you. Um, and I'm also going to harvest the rest of the potatoes and put some dahlias in. So considering I haven't been here much at all this month, the plot is looking so good. Yes, the paths are overgrown with weeds and grass, but the plants are producing amazingly. Just, I, I can't get over how good my beans are. I've already picked some French beans, I've picked courgettes, um, the onions are absolutely huge, absolutely massive, and I didn't think they would grow any larger considering I think all but two um, did a flower, <laughs> did a flower. Um, and they're supposed to stop growing by summer equinox and they've continued to grow and get even bigger so we are going to harvest some amazing onions and all the potatoes and there's definitely a couple of overgrown courgettes to get as well so yeah let's get on with it this is now the view from the greenhouse <laughs> i can't get over it it's so green the plants are absolutely huge and yeah i'm just blown away by how green and flowery this plot is, is amazing. I know to a lot of people, um, it's not gonna look nice to them and it's not particularly a conventional looking allotment plot, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. I think the only thing that I really, I, I want to do is um, get the paths wood chipped, but I'm actually quite liking the grass. <laughs> Okay, so this is what we're dealing with today. This is the potato bed. There's still a row of potatoes down here to harvest. I'm also going to weed the very edge um, and um, put some dahlias in. And I think, let's just get on with it. <laughs> a very decent potato harvest if I do say so myself. Um, unfortunately I have given up now because the amount of red ants nests in here 
is not nice. <laughs> Look away now if you don't want to see what the ground looks like. Yeah. It... Not nice. <laughs> uh, I've definitely left potatoes behind, but I, I don't want to do that anymore. I've got loads of <laughs> ant stings. I've got some on my knee, which is really annoying. <laughs> But, um, yeah. even see my tray um i have about 20 snapdragons some might have died but um these i'm just gonna dot around the dahlias and fill in the gaps absolutely beautiful i can't believe i just grew those <laughs> i've also got a giant courgette i think this is a black beauty I'm not 100 percent sure it might be the one that my neighbor gave me and then this is a romanesco courgette and this is my favorite so i'm so happy i'm starting to get some of these but yeah oh yeah and i've got <laughs> i've got a rotten onion 
which is a shame but there's plenty more onions in there which need harvesting I'm just not going to do it today because I've got this massive bag of potatoes to carry home as well so I'm going to take the potatoes and these little guys and then leave the onions for another day right I think it's time to do a tour now a proper look around and I will go through all the varieties because a couple of people on my previous video asked about what Cosmos varieties I was sowing so I'll make sure to go through everything now right where should we even start I think the greenhouse because um this is where the most disappointment is <laughs> um disappointment regarding the tomatoes so this is of course to be expected when you don't regularly water your tomatoes um a couple of videos ago actually i showed you guys that the leaves were curling and that was weird because i was actually watering them well at that point but it's just gone downhill <laughs> quite a bit so we've got lots of tomatoes forming i have cut off quite a few because they got like the not blossom end rot one of those things anyway but we've got the consoluto fiorentino i think these are saint pierre that is big pink and this one is actually going pink so we might get a couple of tomatoes but i'm not holding out hope for like a really good crop i think this is black russian these are the julietta plums those are looking quite good actually well i don't know that one's not <laughs> and then these are the sun gold i think sun golds are gonna do the best to be honest even though they haven't got the best leaves and on the other side we have all of the peppers and honestly the peppers are absolutely loving life in here so uh this one is the californian wonder and i'm actually surprised at how short these peppers like the plants are but there's so many peppers on there absolutely lovely i really hope that they uh do well and this is also a californian wonder and this one got munched at the stem but it's still producing and still going for it so we'll see we'll see what happens with that one this is the corner de Toro rosso look at those these are looking amazing this is also a corno de Toro rosso and here these are the paprikas i think i need to water these actually but i'm actually going to have paprika peppers which is <laughs> absolutely wild i do think that next year i might not do tomatoes in the greenhouse just because um the watering situation my tomatoes at home perfect <laughs> i wish i'd <laughs> i wish i'd put um wish i'd planted more varieties at home to be honest but the peppers are absolutely loving it in here they are looking so good and healthy um, I think this is just going to be a pepper greenhouse next year. <laughs> no, I might try some outdoor tomatoes next year actually. But yeah, we are learning. We're learning a lot this year and um, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. <laughs> Up here we have the chilies and these got a little bit overwatered to be honest. They are on a tray. Um, quite a few yellow leaves happening. But... We have got some brilliant peppers forming, chilies, I mean. So that's a serrano, although it does look like a KN. Hang on. Oh no, that's a KN. These are the serranos. Um, there's a jalapeno back there. This is a this is a sugar rush peach. I did mention before that I'm not a massive fan of these peppers. I feel like they take ages to get ripe um then we've got pepper dew they're quite round big looking chilies up there another cayenne here look at those fruit 
uh, jalapeno, and back here we have an aubergine. I have noticed quite a few um, aphids and black fly, so I will have to sort that out, but not today. <laughs> And then I realised I had some leeks left over. Don't know how those are still alive, to be honest, but um, I'm going to have to find a space for those. Right, stepping out of the greenhouse. This is what it's looking like now. <laughs> oh my word, <laughs> so much stuff. So I'm definitely not too worried about this situation. Like plants are going to grow they're just going to grow whatever happens um and yeah it it doesn't really bother me or faze me like honestly just the grassy patches and paths and yeah the back of the plot is not looking great but it's nothing that I can't sort out <laughs> is it like just Spending a couple of days down here working on the worst areas. I'm going to quickly sort it all out. So, yeah, I'm not bothered by this situation. Oh, look who's back. Hello. What are you waiting for? What are you up there? You look pretty in the sweet peas. You look so pretty up there. What are you looking for? Fruit or brassicas? Hmm. Wood paper. Oh, there he goes, or she goes. <laughs> anyway, this bed, which we just pulled the potatoes out of. So I've got three dahlias, two mystery dahlias, which I dug up in a previous video, and then everyone said I shouldn't have done it, but I did pot them up. Um, they got eaten by slugs. They came back to life, and now they're in here. So two mystery dahlias, and then this dahlia is. I think it's called a Penhill Dark Monarch and it has not been doing well in my garden. Seagull. Um, so we'll see if it does any better in this bed. Then I've dotted snapdragons literally everywhere because the ones that I planted over there, you can't see them anymore. <laughs> we'll come to that in a minute. But this is a red curry squash. I was thinking about making it go upwards, but now it's just, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got quite a few little fruit on it already. So I'm going to keep an eye on those and get some of those um, like net bags to put over them, not just to stop the squirrels, but also any slugs and snails. And then over here, that is a crown prince from my neighbor. Um, it was in a pot until last week, but it's in the ground now. Some of the leaves are quite yellow, but that was probably from when it was quite root bound. But I think it's gonna perk up really well now. I think it's already grown. <laughs> Onto this bed. Yeah, I know my shadow is gonna be in the way now. So we've got the courgette that came from my neighbour. I think this is a patty pan. These are my, I think I've I had three or four uh, French beans, Cobra climbing French beans. I've already picked some and I noticed earlier that there are quite a few little baby ones. Whoa, windy. Um, yeah, the Cobra French beans have really nice little purple flowers so I'm definitely going to grow, try and grow a lot more next year. And then here we have a sunflower and I've accidentally done like a three sisters or two sisters thing because there is a bean climbing up it or part of a bean climbing up it which is really cool and underneath I had <laughs> before the squash took over I did have this lovely mosaic cosmos they are honestly my favorite I love them they're so so pretty then this is like an absolute jungle. So the pond is there. The cornflowers that have survived are absolutely amazing. I had two, I think these were purple emperor um, nasturtiums and I've never ever had them grow so big ever. 
So this one, or that one, goes all the way over to the pond now, which is crazy. I think all of my plants, oh yeah, and the sunflower, it's all other me, although it's not that difficult because I am only five foot. Um, but yeah, all of my plants seem to be doing amazingly and I, I don't think it's down to me because um, I, I just don't. I think <laughs> there was something in the soil, uh, <laughs> something in the soil, probably, I don't know. The soil was just really good. I didn't have to do much to it to get my plants to grow so big. <laughs> oh no. So I did have a path down here in the last vlog. I mean the last tour. It has disappeared now with weeds, nasturtiums. Uh, yeah, so this is an important path that I need to sort out. And then back here is the pond and then this was overgrown in the last um, a month ago so you can imagine it's even more overgrown now but like I said I'm not worried I can sort it out <laughs> right and then the sweet peas let's go over to the sweet peas these are so tall I obviously haven't been able to pick as many that are <laughs> flowering because again like I've never grown sweet peas this big before hmm look at look at this one hello Yeah, there's too many seed pods to cut off at the moment so i'm just gonna let them form seeds and then <laughs> have an absolute ton of sweet pea seeds for next year i'll definitely be sending them to friends as well but oh my word yeah this is crazy and we've got a nice little sunflower here also tall and five foot down below the sweet peas i did plant a squash but um, it's obviously not going to do well down here just because the sweet peas have gone so so big and then this beautiful thing this is a dahlia that came from my garden i have a i think it was a teesbrook audrey but i'll put the name on screen i'll just have to look at um what i grew last year but they are so pretty i'm so happy that it was this dahlia that <laughs> popped up and came to life We've also got the borage down here. Do you know what? I'm just going to call this my absolute wild area. It's the it's the wildlife area. I do need to deadhead those foxgloves. Otherwise, I'm going to have about a million foxgloves popping up next year. <laughs> right, moving on to this bed. Um, courgette there, which isn't doing great. But we'll see if we get anything from that one. All of the onions, the absolutely huge onions and oh look yay a little fuzzy bee um these are the scabious that i grew from seed so as you can see one has turned out to be white and <laughs> this one's like a reddish almost pink color um i did say that i didn't i'm not really a fan of red to be honest but i don't mind these and the bees absolutely love them so yeah we've got the onions which are huge which i need to harvest very soon some dahlias some leeks down there honestly these beds are absolutely hectic but it's kind of what i wanted so you know <laughs> what can you do we've got red onions in here and then some more dahlias these were from seed and I did show you these the last month, but we've got the lovely, lovely, lovely peachy colour and then this luminous yellow. Crazy, it's like a highlighter yellow. And then this softer pinky yellow colour. But the bees absolutely love these as well because they're obviously big open flowers. Bucket of daisies here, but these daisies <laughs> are doing absolutely amazingly. Right? 
they kind of glow they're so bright and white they just they're just amazing and yeah they're in two buckets and then this was the jerusalem artichoke okay moving on to the bean bed because this is absolutely crazy this is the best courgette this is the romanesco one luckily because it is my favorite and then we've got the beans oh my i can't get over how good they have <sighs> they're, they're just amazing aren't they so these the pink flowered ones were the ones i grew from seed and then wherever there are white flowers i think they're on the other side um those are the ones i bought because i didn't think these would do anything but how wrong was i look at that we're gonna get so many runner beans it's absolutely amazing i absolutely love this <laughs> i've never had beans grow so tall either oh there's a bee going in uh, there weren't um, marigolds planted underneath, but they are in the depths of the nasturtium now. This is a cherry rose. They are so, so pretty. And this is a, I think it's a patty pan squash. This has gone absolutely huge as well. I don't know if we'll be able to... Yeah, that's definitely a patty pan. I don't know if you can see that's a little patty pan forming and onto the pumpkin archway oh my word oops sorry we're blurry these nasturtium like they're huge <laughs> i've never had these i think these were seeds that i saved last year from my um tall nasturtiums the climbing ones and they were not this big in my garden this year last year i mean so i don't know there's honestly this soil just it must be absolutely brilliant um really high in nutrients because <laughs> i just can't get over how big my plants are um underneath they oh, i can't even see them now but there are snapdragons still underneath these giant leaves there's a little nasturtium under there so i will have to cut these back i think and ooh, hit my head um train them onto the archway i did attempt that but as you can see one's just gone straight into the bean bed we'll come round to those cosmos in a minute but um <laughs> oh my gosh i just can't get over like how big things have got things have absolutely gone huge these plants they they honestly they don't need me anymore like look at them go i've barely been here this month and they seem to have just been doing their thing and yeah i'm not needed am i <laughs> i'm really not <laughs> uh oh look look at all the sweet peas behind me um and they <laughs> and there's some snapdragon and planted oh i love watching the bees just go into the um into the snapdragons oh. they're so so cute so these pink ones are the apple blossom and whatever snapdragon i planted under here i think they were called monarch mixed but it doesn't really matter now because you cannot see them <laughs> I'm not going to attempt to get to the back of the plot because actually I will it doesn't look that bad I think I can make it so um this should be the path <laughs> this <laughs> look at the size of these leaves this is the cool oh, Queensland blue <sighs> I didn't think they'd get quite this big um, I, n I know pumpkins g grow, but this is crazy. This one's going to join onto the archway soon. And I think um, they've actually started rooting in the ground. I know they've got their tendrils, but one of them I tried to move and their roots had formed on the main stem. And just gone, gone along, gone along the ground and rooted. But um, yeah, I don't... I don't know if I can get any further. Fig tree is not happy and there's loads of weeds in there. 
I did mention last month that the leaves just fell off. Um, not the leaves, the fruits fell off. So I'm not going to have any fruits this year. There's also a lot of bindweed that I just noticed. So th this is a job for August, I think. And then the random poppy has turned out to be like a really frilly red one. And I'm definitely going to save those seeds and scatter them along the back of the plot um, next year but <laughs> all the rest of it is absolutely wild. The comfrey that I cut back from here has just um, grown again so that is something to address and yeah I've got sunflowers here, I've got more cosmos down there and some forage. Let's go around if I can get out now. I didn't wear my bug spray today, so probably gonna get loads and loads of bites. So there is a path there, but I can't get through at the moment. Um, so we're gonna have to go all the way around. I can go around here, actually. So behind the beans, we have the mosaic cosmos again. Um, they are so pretty. I just can't get over how they go from white to this like speckly pink. They're so pretty. Loads and loads of beans. Look at all the little beans forming. It's so exciting. Got another mosaic com cosmos there. I keep trying to say converse instead of cosmo cosmos. Don't know what's going on. And then fun the little baby one. This is a pink posmo. <laughs> this is a pink pop sock cosmos. Honestly, like every single year I grow them, they just look different. Because <laughs> this is also a pink, a pink pop sock, and they just look different, don't they? I don't know. And then in between, we have the white, the Apollo white, so they're just plain. And then this is my pumpkin archway, and you should see the pumpkins that are forming look so that's a futsu black there are a couple on there this is a uchiki kuri so we are actually going to get some pumpkins and this one's really good this one's gone up over the archway on its own but these have had to have a little bit of help and <laughs> sorry my shadow's in the way Look at the Queensland blue. They are huge. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't get over the size of leaves, look. Uh, huge. Another beautiful little sunflower. And then again down here, I've mainly got the mosaic cosmos. But yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. So this area, I am going to clear and wood chip. This is gonna be the first, first bit to do, I think. Unfortunately, we still haven't had wood chip delivery, um, so I am going to have to buy a couple of bags of chipped bark. I don't mind, like, I don't mind spending that money. I'm just going to get a couple of bags and just do the main pathways, I think, or the, like, super weedy bits. Um, but, yeah, and then hopefully we'll get some wood chip delivered to the plot soon. Because I really need it, don't I? <laughs> we need to go to the very front of the plot, actually, because I haven't showed you the three little mini beds. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't feel overwhelmed at all by this. And I feel like I should, but I really don't. I just feel happy that everything is growing so amazingly. Like, just look at those daisies. They are absolutely glowing, aren't they? Yeah, I love it. I love it here. Anyway, let's look at the three little birds before we um, call it a day. <laughs> so 
So the very front of the plot is looking relatively the same. We've still got the mound covered up, still rubbish, and unfortunately a load of stinging nettles and bindweed has sprouted back up. So this is, um, yeah, this is really annoying, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, it can be dealt with. So the carrot planter obviously has done amazingly, considering I just pulled out those three little perfect carrots. Mm -hmm. Wah, baby. <laughs> these are the Jolby Little pumpkins and oh my word I've also never had Jolby Littles grow quite so big what on earth there is loads of fruit forming look at them they're absolutely perfect little things um so <laughs> that's, that's amazing I'm definitely gonna have to try and tie this on and up a little bit better we've got dahlias at the front so this is another yellowy one but completely different to the neon yellow one that's in the other bed um there's a ready pink one in there and i don't know what color this one is i don't think it's flowered yet but there is a lot of weeds in this pathway so this is definitely a spot for the wood chip i think the carrot planter has done so good but the ones that I planted in this row are not doing good I think they obviously weren't getting light so I've stuck these sticks here and um, I think once we harvest these I'm just gonna sow some more <laughs> and then just keep going with the carrots there are a couple of parsnips at the back which I can't really get to anymore because these carrots are so big but yeah <laughs> but this carrot planter such a good idea i'm so happy and i love it i love that i painted it pink as well <laughs> this is also another project water spot and i'm gonna paint it in these two buckets if you can even see everything just looks green like a green blob on camera but these are the i always get it wrong so apple pink apple fur pink potatoes um, the knobbly ones, they're looking really good. And then, yeah. <laughs> this is the grass. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I didn't even talk about the leeks. So the leeks are doing pretty well. This one is looking really good. I had to replace a couple. Good job I had those spares in the greenhouse because those two got dug up. Um, that one's not doing anything, so I might replace that one. But other than that, they're looking good. We're going to get some good little leeks. Brassica bed. Oh my gosh, I haven't even looked in there. But basically, they've grown so big, they've just pushed the net off. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to look. I can't even get round. Um, obviously, they've already been eaten. Ah... Uh, I can't even remember what was in the front. Is this a cabbage or a Romanesco? Not too sure, but um, if I'm gonna grow brassicas again next year, I'm definitely doing it in a larger bed and making a proper cage. But um, did not expect them to get that big. Right, so here we are. This is the plot, the absolutely crazy wild plot and i love it i absolutely love it so yeah that is the plot at the end of july and yeah there's loads to do absolutely loads to do but i'm excited just to be able to be here again and i'm excited to see what august is going to bring us hopefully lots of good things and hopefully it's going to be a very productive month on the allotment plot. Yay! Anyway, thank you all so 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 much for watching and for sticking around, especially while I have not been producing as many videos as I wanted to. Um, I am actually going to go on a break for another week to 10 days, so I won't be uploading videos for another week or so. Um, but then hopefully when I come back 
I will be refreshed and um, ready to make some YouTube videos again for you guys because I absolutely love this YouTube journey. I love sharing the plot. I love how you guys are so kind and motivate me and inspire me to just, yeah, keep going with the allotment and um, yeah, there's uh, some magpies. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.